Good morning, everyone. Uh, Randon Purcell here. I am here to introduce you to and talk about uh, our new instrument here at Fallout Music Group called Trailer Browns. And uh, we're really excited about this release, and I personally am as excited as I can be at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, with one coffee. So uh, I'm going to try to cruise through this because I really got to get to that second coffee. So uh, it's uh, well, I want to do just kind of a brief walkthrough of the instrument, introduce you to, to its sounds, uh, its features, show you a quick demo, and um, give you time to go out and buy it. So uh, let's dive right in here. So trailer brands, here we go. So it's a single instrument, loads up, and I'm just going to walk you through the interface. This is all in the owner's manual as well, which is only like two pages long. Uh, so it's it's good for composers because I think most of us have a very short attention span for reading owner's manuals, which is why we're always learning about new features in the tools we've had for years. So uh, what we've done here is we've made live brass recordings and uh, synth recordings and put them into this instrument so that you can mix the two layers. Um, as we've mentioned uh, with previous instruments and on our site, uh, we're trying to do these kind of in a clean and dry way so that um, it makes these very easy to fit into your mix um, without, you know, layering in our own hits and tons of effects and things like that. So it gives you something kind of raw to work with. And uh, the other difference between this and a lot of other Bram instruments is that we recorded everything across a full octave um, so that you can have kind of a playable Bram as opposed to just kind of being stuck with uh, whatever key we decided it sounded best on. So um, without further ado, I'm going to dive right in here and walk through the interface. So first off, when it, when it first loads up, you've got this kind of dry... Um, still sounds cool, even dry. Very playable. And what makes this actually really fun is um, being as an instrument instead of just some wave files uh, is you can play them short and long. So so if you need to be able to do things like that, it's a, it's a great stab instrument as well. Um, so what we have is down the middle is your two volume controls. The first is for your synth layer. The second is for your brass layer. So if I take that all the way down, We're just hearing the synth, the other way around, just the brass. And so that allows you to mix those two. I shouldn't talk while I'm playing that, it's probably going to drown me out. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, recorded everything down a, a clean path and down a dirty path with our own custom distortion chain. So all of these synths here on the left, there's 10 of them available to, to choose from. They've all got two versions, and then our, our live brass recordings have a clean and dirty version as well. This is all available via the key switches here at the bottom. And I'm going to just kind of show you on, on each layer here. I'm going to load the different synth. Um, but uh, first with the brass. So here's the clean. Here's the dirty. Here, we didn't try to make this some drastic, you know, difference, but both times there's clean. And with the synth, let's go clean and dirty. Just kind of mashed it up a little bit there. So together, here's um, the way these key switches work. They start on C0, and it goes from clean versions of both. Then on C sharp, it goes to dirty synth, clean brass. On D, it goes to dirty brass, clean synth. And then on, on E flat, D sharp, whatever you want to call it, it goes to um, a dirty version of both. So I have those both layered in together. Here is clean. <laughs> I'm talking over it again. Dirty synth only. Uh, dirty brass only. And dirty versions of both. 
And of course, that's all just the dry recordings as well. So once we start layering in effects, you can really get some cool stuff. So um, also what we did is recorded everything in one bar and two bar recordings, all at 120 beats per minute, but with Time Machine Pro, those will stretch to fit your DAW uh, tempo. So at one bar, uh, that's what we've been listening to. If I stretch that or change that, I should say, it's because it's not stretching, it's actually unique samples. Uh, for the two bar, uh, one thing I like to do um, is, uh, like I do with all my contact instruments, is take use of the right click learn MIDI automation. So if you want to use the same bram throughout a track, but sometimes you want it in one bar and sometimes in two bar, just slap whatever automation you want on that, and uh, that way you don't have to load up two instruments. You can just switch between one bar and two bar throughout the track. So um, let me show you the synths real quick, uh, and I'll do this very quickly. I'll, I'll use the clean versions for this, but uh, let me take out the brass. So there's 10 synths to choose from over here on the left. And what you'll find is that with 10 synths, clean and dry, and then two brass, clean and dry, plus all of these insert effects and everything, you can make quite a few different instruments with this guy. Uh, so over here on the right, you've got your reverb and delay. I don't think there's any explanation needed for most of these. Down the bottom are all your insert effects. You've got your transient shaper, your screamer distortion, saturation, phaser, and a low pass filter, which uh, when enabled, we've already mapped the mod wheel to your cutoff here for your low pass filter. And then down along the bottom, your basic ADSR controls. Um, that's really it. That's the whole interface. Very easy to use. And uh, what I'd like to do is take you through the demo I wrote the other morning, just a real quick, you know, hour project. Um, and, sh and then I'll show you each of the instruments and how I used it in this, because it definitely is more than just a brown maker. So without uh, spending too much time dwelling here, we're going to go ahead and start this up. And here is the demo. So obviously there's some drums and other effects in there. Um, I'm not going to spend time going through those. If you're curious, you can see them in the track names. I tried to give a call out to each of the companies that I, I've used their products here. Um, a lot of the risers and whooshes and stuff, those are just custom things made here um, with some field recordings. Um, but let's go through each of the trailer Brahm instruments so you can see how I use them. So first we started off with this kind of filtered uh, synth only. Let me load that up. You can see I've turned off the brass layer, I've got some distortion phaser, and then I'm using the low pass filter. So you can hear it's just kind of a cool little synth instrument. 
Uh, next, I brought in kind of a, an octave, not even an octave, just a higher uh, frequency version of that with some distortion. Nothing real special there, just a nice little dirty synth. Uh, again, taking use of the screamer, the phaser, and the low-pass filter. And then this, I just had some EQ um, added to take out that, that low end. And then um, I did add some extra filtering with uh, Filter Freak from Sound Toys. Um, on all of this track, I, I'm using two reverbs. Sometimes I'm using the reverb in contact. Um, other times I'm using uh, Eventide's Black Hole because I really like how long and clean that thing is. And then also Liquid Sonic's 7th uh, seven, seven, seventh Heaven, I can never say that, uh, is used in here as well. Um, which is kind of the point of our instruments is to give you kind of a raw, dry version so that you can use whatever effects you want to fit into your mix. Um, then, of course, we also give you the tools in the interface to use the effects in contacts if that suits you. Um, but we want you to be able to get these things into your mixes the way you want them. Um, let's see, I've got some trailer drops from our other library. Um, the main bram that you hear is right here. This is just a first synth and brass layer. And with that, I wanted it to have even more low end power, so I, I loaded up a second instance here that just has the, b the base synth layer. So together, they make a nice, sharp, powerful brown. Um, let's see. Then I wanted something to come in a little bit uh, louder and, and, again, higher frequency, a little sharper. So I've got another distorted version of this, um, a little brass heavy. And uh, I've got the screamer and the saturation on it. And again, I did, you know, EQ out the bottom end of this again. Um, for those Studio One users out there, I also used this little plugin called Xtrem. This is one of my favorite simple, easy to use plugins. Uh, you can either put it in panning or trem mode uh, for gating effects or for just panning things back and forth. Super easy, fun to use. And I use that just to get it to sweep back and forth. Again, uh, the pitch bend's enabled on all these, so you can do those nice bending effects, so um, enjoy that. Now, at the end here, I wanted to layer in an octave higher. I didn't want to load up someone else's instruments. Um, normally, maybe I'd, I'd load in a high brass patch or something. I keep doing that. Um, in this case, I just cheated a little bit because it's trailer music, and it doesn't matter if it sounds real. You just want it to sound good. So um, I took the same idea of kind of a high... Um, EQ'd Bram, and then I just um, played the top of our instrument, which is a B. I wanted it to be an E up above that, so I just pitched the whole instrument up five. Uh, definitely cheating, but it worked. Here's how that sounds. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next, we had this bending Bram from the beginning of the track. I'm going to go back and play that. So with the pitch bend and some of the effects, it's really nice to be able to kind of do these bending war horns with this instrument. Um, you can do quite a few things. This is just a simple version with the low pass filter getting cranked up as the track moves on. and easy. Then the final instrument here that I used from Trailer Brams, um, I really wanted a pulsing synth bass. And while this doesn't have that kind of out of the box, what you'll see here is I loaded up um, this Bram instrument. I actually left some brass in there too, but um, loaded this up, put some screamer and saturation on it, low pass filter to take out that high end. 
and leave me with just kind of a, a nice sharp synth bass. And then I used that little Studio One X-Trem plugin again and uh, set it to a square wave so that it would chop it and, and gate it instead of um, sweeping it back and forth or anything like that. Um, so that comes out sounding like this. So it's a great way to make pulsing basses, and as you can see, if I were just to switch through the different synths, It's um, not really the way that this uh, instrument was originally intended to be set up, but, you know, it works. And uh, that's kind of the, the joy of writing music, is taking a lot of these virtual instruments and using them in ways that perhaps they weren't originally intended. But um, if what you're looking for is just a nice, strong bram maker, um, this certainly does that. Uh, some, some bass to add into the lower portions of your brass tracks. Uh, it's great for that. And uh, we just hope that you enjoy using it as much as uh, we enjoyed making it. And uh, wish you all happy music making. Thanks for checking it out.